So, yeah, welcome back. If you want to hashtag about the event, it's uh, MCR Fred. And we've got um, Adam Twitter, Simon Fred. And this is the GitHub site that we've got running. Uh, for those of you that have, did see part one, please come in. Um, this is a repository we've got on uh, GitHub, so you can help contribute to, uh, to that. So, we're going over that in a bit. Um, at the end of the first part as well. Basically what I've said is that the second half we're going to be going over some of the tools that I use and some of the things that I use that help me sort of uh, stay in touch with what's sort of going on. Uh, it's just moving so quick and there's so much that we need to sort of keep on top of now with front end development. So uh, I mentioned Nicholas Salga. Um, oops, sorry, give me a second. So this is uh, GitHub, as many people are on Git or GitHub at all. Let's have a show of hands. Oh cool, loads of you, smash it. So, um, yeah, one of the things that I like to do on GitHub is you've got the, the RSS feed there. So, um, I use this thing called Vienna. Um, so, I'm just trying to bring up Vienna on that screen. Oops. Okay, so, um, if you copy uh, Nicholas Gallagher's RSS feed, and then you put it into an RSS feeder, you can, uh, I use this, like I say, Vienna, and this basically shows us what Nicholas has been up to, so all the different commits he's been doing. So it's a really good way to sort of keep on top of, you know, what's going on and uh, just see uh, what sort of commits are being done, what people are doing with code and why they're doing it, and it's really helpful for things like uh, with the commit notes. So what you can do is read why they did something, and then you can go and check out the code, so then you can obviously have a play about with that code. So, it's all different things there you can see it's been up to. And that's his GitHub page there. And yeah, so if you just click that, um, copy the link address and then you can paste that into to Vienna. <laughs> Again, for those of you that didn't catch the first half, this is the first presentation that I've done, so I'm not used to all this slide presentation stuff and big projectors, so hopefully I'll get back uh, better at that. Let's just hang up. If I can find my cursor, there it is. Okay, so GitHub is uh, often referred to as like the Wikipedia for code. For those of you that aren't familiar with GitHub, um, you can submit code to it, and then other people can sort of have a look at your code, and it can do what's called a uh, fork, which is take your code, and then um, maybe add to it, and then do something called a pull request. So then, People can say if I've got uh, what's called a repository, which is like my project, someone can take a copy of that, think, oh, there's something that could be done a bit better on that. Send me a pull request and I can have a look at it and go, oh, that's really cool, and then pull that in. Then anyone else that's following that repository or project can then take advantage of that code that's coming. Um, so one of the great things that I love on GitHub is um, the HTML5 boilerplate. So has anyone used the HTML5 boilerplate? Cool. So um, it's really cool looking at the commit notes as well. So um, I've got the link there to the first commit in Paul Irish, which was like three years ago. And if you keep on uh, top of all the commits, or you've got some spare time to go back and have a look at some of the commits. And it's really interesting some of the discussions that have gone on and why certain things have changed and how the project's evolved. It's really, really interesting. At least I find it interesting anyway. Um, so yeah, and again, like do the same thing with Vienna. So I uh, copy the RSS link and just keep on top of anything that's happening within um, the, the HTML file by the way. Um, so there's a few, uh, one of the positives that I run on mine is um, with Chrome DevTools. Again, just have a quick show of hands who's using Chrome DevTools. Cool. Do you know you can theme it at all? Nope. So what you can do is So yeah, that's just bring up Chrome Web Tools. So uh, probably on your machines it'll be white. So um, I can't remember the blog post, I'll stick the link up for it. But um, something about like uh, Inception, so you can actually like inspect the Chrome Dev Tools, and through doing that you can find out how to change all the colours and styles for it. So I basically found out how to do that, and I'm a big fan of uh, the Monokai theme. I can look in a code all day long, we don't have to be looking at a glaring white screen for a lap, to find it a lot easier on the eyes. And also with the 
like the yellow, green, blue, and pink, it's just really easy to start to figure out which bits of uh, codes where. So, if I go to that there, um, so basically that's just run from a CSS file. So that code is now on a repository on GitHub, and people can see that. So what I did is if you go to the top here, uh, you can see people that have bought two projects, so it's people that have taken my code and brought it along to their, their own uh, sort of user on GitHub. So those are all the people that have bought the project, so it's nice that uh, Andy Osmani works for Google, so it's nice to know that you know, he's checking it out, it'd be nice to give me any feedback if he's watching this, it'd be cool. Um, so from that, I opened up all these different forks, and then again, just pulled the RSS feeds, because I was thinking, oh, that's cool, like, why someone forks my project, and has does something really cool with it. So um, this guy, James Doyle, I noticed my Vienna, Flagged up, someone's done something on your um, monarchy thing. So I got in contact with him and said, Oh, what are you up to? And I pulled this um, code up and had a look at it. And uh, I don't use all of the Chrome DevTools, there's so much that you can do with it. And he was using something that was a bit different that I've sort of missed. So it's like, oh, that's really cool. So I got in contact with him, he sent a pull request over, so I checked over the code, and that was cool. And then I came into that main repository. So just get some was just like, absolutely awesome for that. And, it's just, you know, it doesn't have to be anything just for like code either. There's just so much you can, you can do with it. Uh, there's gists as well, like my little code snippets, and I just definitely go and check check out GitHub. So that's that. Shortcuts. So I absolutely love shortcuts. Uh, Nicholas Sakas has done this really good uh, presentation about accessibility. Now Nicholas Sakas, he just uses a keyboard. So it goes into some of like the pain points of you know like when you just need to use a keyboard and you don't have uh, the mouse. But even if you can use a mouse and keyboard, then there's just so much things you can um, take advantage of with using keyboard shortcuts. So for example, like if my mouse is all the way down here, rather than having to scroll all the way up and click in here, you can just do command L and get to it. And then like there's like command C, so you can set new tabs. When W throws that down, you can do Command Shift T, which will hopefully come up in a sec. Sorry. Uh, type in. Sorry. So if you close it down and then you want to reopen it, you can do Shift Command T to bring it back up. So there's just, just loads and loads of shortcuts in all different applications, so I really recommend just checking out shortcuts. I mean, there's many people use Photoshop as well as doing the code. So, if you've used Photoshop, you probably see the, the toolbar on the left. Does anyone use that? <laughs> yeah, you don't need to just close it down and use shortcuts. It saves you loads of time. So, I recommend checking out the uh, slides as well. But, uh, so, Total Finder. Uh, <coughs> is anyone that uses a PC? Windows? Okay, well, uh, you might not find this that. Uh, that good. But uh, I'm sure there's applications and things like that that uh, try to be as good as things like this. Um, so let me try and find a window up here. So um, if you open a new window, generally like general behavior is you'll end up with like all these different windows all over the place. So the Total Finder allows you to use like very similar to sort of Chrome um, with the tabbing system. Again, you can use the same sort of shortcuts to go through tabs and stuff like that. So that's really cool. I think you can even do the reopen of a tab, which is just fantastic. So that's really cool. That's something that I uh, like feature request to put in and if you just did it. So thanks a lot for that, that's really cool. Um, also another thing, um, I'll be going in over this in a bit, but um, there's things you can use called doc files, which you can do an awful lot with. And uh, there's a command so a shortcut which is command shift dot and then that will show you all the, the dot files there or basically any, any hidden file on your map so it's really cool to just have these little quick shortcuts just to get get to uh, the things you need to get to um, yep so that's sort of finder um, quicksilver does anyone use this wrong acts because i installed it on this machine <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So Quicksilver, um, basically um, the default shortcut for that is command and space, but I use that to zoom in in Photoshop, but um, I changed it to alt space. So you basically click alt space and you get this little dialog box that comes up and it learns which applications that you need to go to. So say if you've got like 10 or 20 applications, you could use uh, command and shift to toggle through, but sometimes it's quite laborious to get some to ones that you're using uh, that frequently. So you type alt space and then start typing in the application you want to use. So for example, if you start typing in Photoshop, I can actually just type P and it knows because I use Photoshop quite a lot, that's the application that I'm after. Again, F is Finder, S will bring up Sublime Text too. So it's a really, really quick way to just get to different applications that you're after. Um, there's all sorts of other things you can do with it as well. Um, so uh, there's a folder that I put like on client work and things like that. So I've dragged that over to the settings within um, Quicksilver as well. So it also looks within that. So I can type in client names and it'll bring up the folder as well. Straight in Finder, which I find really helpful. So that's Quicksilver, awesome and free as well. Um, Spectacle, this is one that I've started using uh, more recently. Um, so it will work here. Yeah, so you can use shortcuts to basically put it left or right, which is obviously really good if you've got you know like a site on one side and then you code on the other side. Um, so you can you know I code and then uh, you could use something like live reload if people use that. So okay, I forgot to add that in, but I'll, I'll, I'll mention that in uh, maybe the next one. Uh, so that's really cool. So and again, like uh, I think if you tend to click this, see it, it always frustrates me this because like why is it not gone to the full width? But with spectacle I've set a shot up so you can get it nice full width and full height as well. So uh, those are the shortcuts that I've set up, but the original, so there's other shortcuts as well that you can set up and you can do all manner of different things with Spectacle. Uh, again, it's free, uh, that's really cool. Um, so, got a quick apology to make. Um, Mike Little, who's the co-founder of WordPress, he's giving a talk at the Manchester WordPress user group. So I'm sorry that those uh, have clashed uh, tonight, but going forward I'll make sure that those, those don't clash. Um, the one might go along to them. I went to the last one, it was great. Uh, nice guy. So, um, people use WordPress. So, yeah, anyone use OptiPress? No one. Right, well, OptiPress is absolutely fantastic. Um, it would take me quite a long time to go over it. Um, it's quite in depth, but I'll briefly go into some of the great things you can do with it. So, has anyone dealt with a WordPress database before? I've had to pull in on the WordPress. Yeah, you know the pain, yeah? So, um, <clears throat> a lot of people with WordPress, when they first get WordPress, if they're not familiar with how it works and stuff like that, they'll add about 50 plugins and it, it can just, you create, and, and again, uh, let's just go back a bit. Going back to when I first started in web design, um, I wasn't really sure what like a database was or know of its existence. So, um, those of you who aren't familiar, basically a database is just like, this massive big file of all this data which can populate a website. So over time, if you've got a WordPress build that's like, let's say five years old, the database can get just full of all sorts of crap. So uh, Octopress is really cool in the fact it doesn't have a database and it's all run through GitHub and it uses something called Mark Markdown, which I'll go into in a minute, which is like really, really quick for all things. And then you can do uh, basically like a, a deploy so you can test everything on your local machine, check everything's okay, do um, a rate deploy to terminal, which I'll be going into, and then it will send all the files to GitHub, and then you can see the, uh, the site which I have now up and running. Like this. So that's all. That's an Octopress site, and that's all generated by a Markdown code. Um, So, Markdown, let's show you some Markdown. Does anyone use Markdown before? Oh, it's awesome, Mike. Uh, that's not what I want to do. So, this application is pretty cool, it's called MAU, which pronounced M O U. So, just to give you a few examples. So, if you're going to do uh, a link in HTML, Type this out and you close it, and you have to type it out again. And then you 
close that eight time. So, yeah, follow up from Coke. Put in markdown. Just do that. And this, this application will show you what it's actually in there. So, obviously, like, there's a lot less for you to write there. Um, let's do an image. So we've got image, then we've got to do source of the image, then let's go for uh, place kitten. So, whoops. Ah, get that eventually. Uh, need no tag as well. Let's stick one of them. And then close that off. So, an image. Um, let's try and remember this. Um, so, I'll tag me out and the link. There you go. So, we've got the same thing, just having to write less code. It's also a really cool markdown because if you're looking at it, it's raw um, code as well. It's just really easy to, to look at and to find different things. So, no, rather than looking at all this with all these image tags, just looking at just this, it's obviously a lot easier to just process and see what's going on. And um, it's just, just really awesome. There's so much more you can do as well with the markdown. It's just so little code that you have to write. And the beauty of it is, is when you're using something like Octopress, is that all your files are just in markdown and it just pushes it through. And it's a static HTML, so you don't even have to worry about it. It just automatically does it for you. So that's fantastic. Uh, Emmet uh, used to be called Zen Coding. Um, so we use this. Yeah, cool. Um, I've just started using it. I'm not going to go into an example because I tried this the other day and it didn't work. So um, just trust me, it's it's awesome and you can do loads of stuff with it. Um, the Sublime Text too. I think I'll, oh yeah, sorry, let's go into SAS and less first, then we'll use SAS and less. Cool, loads of you. So, um, again, like, I'm not really sure like, what sort of everyone's skill sets are and skill bases, so like, that's one of the things I'm trying to get out of this first Manchester Fred is to sort of see where everyone's up to. And it'd be really cool at the end if you do fill out like, this Google form that I'm going to put up, just so I can see, like, if I need to go into you know, like, more detail into one thing, or if I've gone into detail with like, too much of another thing. So, um, SAS and less, yeah, is really cool. Uh, just give you a quick example of that. Uh, so, this is the, the source code for uh, the fedup.github.com site. So, if you was to create a fork of that, you could get this code on, on your machine. And if you wanted to, we're uh, using uh, hex codes, you can also use like HSLA and uh, other, other different types. But also, it's it's just it's not very easy to remember these strings of um, of code for a color. It's so like red is um, like F zero zero, but obviously, you know, like if, if you want to try and remember all of those, it's pretty hard, and there's, there's just so much to remember. So what you can do is set like a variable, which we've done here. So at any point, we can just um, rather than uh, specifying this later on, we can just specify what color we want it to be here. Um, the beauty of this as well is that uh, you can then just change this and it will change throughout the rest of the code as well. So what lesson SAS allow you to do is uh, pre-process it. So you write uh, this which is like, this is a SAS file, or you can use less as well, and then it will output that into a CSS file and change everything for you. So all of it. So that's, that's really cool. Um, also, uh, I'm not sure if this is a, a shortcut I've installed, so a package that I've installed, or if it's uh, just built into Sublime Text 2. But if you do Control Alt Enter, that's where you can, I'm not sure if you can see that there. But basically, you can start doing your send coding in there. I know I said I wouldn't do any, but I'll give it a go. There you go, that's a very simple example there. So you can type it all in at the bottom there, and you can see what it's outputting at the top. So again, just Really uh, nice way and fast way to author code. Okay, and also um, just going into the, the theme there that I'm using.
again, like I mentioned, that I like the, uh, the Monokai theme that I use within Chrome DevTools. So, um, Jake is there tonight. Thanks for sending me the link to uh, Phoenix one. So, basically, what I've done is uh, Phoenix basically deals more with the, the UI, so I've got the sidebar styles and things like that. And Monokai is this is on section, so I sort of fuse those together. And again, that's on my GitHub page if you want to have a play about with that. Um, the Monokai Phoenix theme, which I called it. So it's basically just making all this um, as well dark as well. So I'm really happy with, with so I'll settle that I've got some for Sublime Text 2. Again, there's like a billion different shortcuts for Sublime Text 2, and you can set your own as well. So it's just awesome, Sublime Text 2, definitely recommend it. Okay, so terminal, we use this terminal. Are you scared of terminal? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, again, like, if you've not used it, this might be a bit like, whoa, what's, what's going on here? Um, but if you, I, I definitely recommend if front end web developers should get into terminal. It's just so powerful, there's so much you can do with it. And um, again, like, like I can't. Uh, keep going on about this, but if you can fill in something in Google Forms, if there's if it's something you want to learn, you know, like, let's, let's just get together and do it. Um, so, terminal might be something that we go into, you know, just as a Manchester thread by itself, because um, there's just so much you can do with it. Also, um, with terminal, I find that I've sort of got it to a place where I'm sort of happy with it, but I'm not really sure how I got it to that end point. Uh, I have wrote a blog article on it. Um, but it was very much a process of trial and error and sort of trying, trying things. And I'd love it if, like, um, there's Matthias, um, Syndersaurus, there's all these other people that use doc files. Uh, and it'd be cool if someone who knew what the fuck he was doing could just do a, a screencast, because I, I don't know how I managed to get it to where I did, to be honest. So it's, I'm going to find it hard sort of teaching how I got it to that stage. Um, but I can show you some of the things that I've managed to get up and running. So, Reaper Z. Um, is something similar to Quicksilver almost within Terminal. So um, a lot of when you, in Terminal, a lot of things you need to do is go to different directories to, to do different things, and to type out like the whole directory is just going to take ages. So what Ruby Z does is it sort of um, learns what directories that you're going to. Uh, think using this thing called like frequency. So now if I type Z space and then start typing thread and then enter, it will go to the directory where I've got my fedup.github.com repository held. Um, so just to save you having to type out the whole thing in, you can just quickly get to directories that you need to. So that's Reaper Z. Um, oh my ZSH, I know it's good, but I cannot remember why. And I don't exactly know which bit of it is, because when I started working with Terminal, I just threw all these things into it. So I'm not really sure which bits, you know, I could just stand alone there in terminal, um, which bits of code relate to which bits of uh, dot files that I've configured. So, um, sorry about that. Uh, Homebrew is like a, an install package, so it makes it really easy to install things via the terminal. So that's cool, and um, dot files. Um, dot files, uh, what, what I showed briefly before, uh, so it was a link to, again, I host my uh, dot files on GitHub, so you can check out the dot files there and pull them in. Um, so, so dot, dot files are so called because they have a dot at the start of the file. I don't know why, but it just took me a little while to sort of grasp that. So, um, just open that. Git config one. So this is uh, a dot file, which is my git config file, so this is what I use to help me um, with aliases um, on git and github. So ordinarily, to do a, like a push, you'd have to write git and then push. So just set up all these little things here, so I can just do, um, I've changed it, so git is just g, and uh, push there is p, so I can just do g space p and it will push my code. Or, 
wants to do a poll you've got up there and then generally every time I want to do uh, a commit um, use this as well which would do a, a message so I always every time I commit I, I write a message with it so rather than having to type this out every time I can just do G space C space and then um, commit message as well so yeah I think it is a bit daunting you know when you're first trying to get into it but once you've you know gone through that initial pain barrier just learning it and just do so many things so quickly with it. So um, last night I did um, a blog post about the Manchester Fed event, and uh, that's a bit weird. No. <laughs> um, okay, I'll, I'll just quickly quickly talk you through some of the stuff that I did. So um, this is where my Simon Wing Design Repository is held. Again, this is using Oxpress. So uh, I did a Git pull. So I had my this is my all my files locally. And I'm checking to see whether anything got authored uh, on GitHub just to make sure that I'm up to date. So I did that. Then I did what's called the rake generate. So that's generating all the, the markdown, transforming that to uh, HTML, static HTML, so you can view the site. And then uh, I've not done it there, but what you can do is uh, a rake preview, and then you can view the site via localhost on port 4000. So then you can check everything, make sure everything's okay locally before you're going to push it to GitHub and push it to the live site. So that's really cool and again really easy to do. Uh, it's just knowing the right commands to do. And again, like setting up aliases, you can make it so it's more uh, tailored to how you interpret it to be. Um, so then I've done git add, so I've added the files. And then after you've added the files, you uh, commit those. So I just wrote the commit message there. So in this instance, uh, in my uh, Octopus file, the markdown, put an exclamation mark in the title, and when I pushed it and uh, deployed it, it wasn't showing. So I, I think that the cause of that was this exclamation mark, so I took that out and it worked again. So I put the commit message that I was removing the exclamation mark. Then I did the git push, so I'm then pushing all that code to, um, to GitHub, and then just do a rake deploy. And that rake deploy will take all that code, put it to GitHub, and just it's just fantastic, it's just so quick. So that's some of the sort of stuff you can do within the terminal. And again, like uh, I'll be putting all these slides up online. So these are some of the, uh, the commands that, that I use that I find helpful. So that's that's it. Um, so thanks a lot for coming to this first Manchester Fred. Um, if you want to talk about the you amount know, of Twitter using the hashtag MCRFred, and um, any feedback would be great. And if you'd like to um, going forward, if you'd like to help me out and you know speak, or if there's anything that you uh, feel that you know like we need to talk about as front end developers, or if you could help out with uh, fedup.github, or if you want to contribute but you're not quite sure how to do something, just get in contact with me. You know, I'll try and help you out where I can. But yeah, thanks again to all these guys, and thanks a lot for coming. Uh, I'll put up a, a link on Twitter as well for the Google Forms and if you could you know just help me out and just submit something on that and that'd be brilliant. So thanks a lot. Cheers.